Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the show. Today, we have a hot button topic, as it were, for you today. Surprised? Curious? Me too. I don't even know why I said that. Let's hop over and let's take a look at what we're doing today and why it is a hot button topic. Let's go to the desk. So today we have this big GMC pickup truck in and we're gonna put a full stereo in it. He's got this beautiful eight inch factory touchscreen in the dash with all the bells and whistles. It's got the Bose system, that little grill right there. And that little grill combined with that eight inch screen is what we're gonna talk about today. That is the hot button topic. Why you ask? Well, because we're gonna put a big stereo in here and we need to integrate with that radio somehow. Now, conventional wisdom would say, no problem, get yourself some form of a line level adapter that you can take that factory amplifier's output, maybe do some summing, and then go and find all these microphones that are in here and disconnect those and, and then EQ the heck out of it so that you can compensate for the fact that the Bose is doing that. And then it's all gonna get messed up because you have door chimes that come out of this door that's gonna blast you out of the car and you're like, oh my, why would you do that? Why? When they make a product like this. The AP4 GM61. That's right, an amp pro. Now for some of you guys, you're going, I don't understand, what's an amp pro? An amp pro is a device, well you know what, let's cut to the intro, I'll meet you over on the workbench, and we'll open this thing up, and we'll take a look at it. So the first thing in the box we're gonna find in bubble wrap is the brain itself. Taking a quick look at the brain, you have a Toshlink digital input. You flip it over onto the back, sub, center, rear left and right, front left and right. Vehicle harness will go into the big plug here. This is for an expansion port. You have a couple dip switches, a programming button, the base knob, and the USB programmer. Of course, you're gonna get some form of instruction manual. We'll come back to this in a minute. You get the base knob. Now, whether your amplifier has a base knob or not, I always plug this in. You don't have to mount it somewhere, but just put it somewhere accessible. The reason why is because this is what you're gonna use to control the chime level. The chime is gonna be replicated by this module, and if it's too loud, you're gonna go into programming and use this to turn it down. So you can actually, if, if chime is bothering you in the car, you can almost make it non-existent with this guy here. So it's just a faint little whisper, ding, of the chime. Plug your base knob in, make it accessible. Then we have our master harness here to get plugged into the car and on it is this blue white wire here which is our remote turn on so this does provide a remote turn on this is what's going to plug into the input that said vehicle harness and that's it. Now you're just gonna plug these in. Now let's talk about what an Amp Pro is actually designed to do. As you see, it has these RCAs here. It's just a pretty much nondescript looking box. Most people would confuse this with some kind of a high level to low level adapter, but it's not. It's actually using the most bus system in the car to grab the right and left signal that's coming out of the audio system and then recoding it, just like it's being sent out to the Bose amplifier to create these outputs. These are the same outputs that your Bose amplifier is creating. Now it's either going to be a four or five volt output, which is set via the dip switch, which we'll get to in a second. But this is going to give you a full bandwidth, full frequency range, high voltage output. There's no compression happening here. There's no high level to low level. It's using the signal that's in the car that goes back to the amplifier. Let's go ahead and hop into the vehicle. And we'll take a look at the amplifier where it's located and getting that radio out of the dash. And we'll talk about this some more. So in the Bose system, the amplifier is located way up here in this dark chasm. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna go ahead and get this back seat out of the car so that we can get to it. And then we'll show you how to get this off so that we can get to where we need to plug that in. Now to get this seat out, there's a couple 18 millimeter bolts that run along here. Go ahead and remove all those. You're gonna lift the seat up so that it, because there's hooks back here so that you can get this out. out of the car and we can get to this area right here. This is the factory Bose amplifier. Now anytime you're installing an Amp Pro, you're gonna be leaving the factory amplifier in the car. 
There's good reason for that. Let's say you just wanted to add some subwoofers to the vehicle and keep the factory Bose playing everything else. The Amp Pro can do that. All you would do is put the Amp Pro in in the dash, plug your subwoofer RC in, and there you go. Everything else will function fine. You just have subwoofers now playing full bandwidth, no goofiness going on, no bass roll off, no nothing like that. Or let's say you just want to improve the front stage on the car. You like everything else, it's just it's imaging like garbage up front. You want to add in a DSP and maybe you want to add like a tent underneath the seat. Either way, by leaving the factory amplifier it just opens up the options for one, timing, meaning are you going to be doing this in one part, two part, three part, if you just want to add a sub one day and then come back in at mids and highs. The Amp Pro allows you to do all that. Now on the amplifier there's four harnesses. Starting on the driver's side you have this big one that has big fat wires in it. That's going to be your main power harness. And as they go over towards the passenger side the wires get a little thinner. Those are going to be signal and data. What we want to look at is the first two harnesses and possibly the third. Now to integrate into these there's a couple different ways you can do it. First if you wanted you can run all new wires in the car although I will tell you all the doors have clips in them and it's gonna be really hard to get through those clips into the door without having to hack up the clip which eh. We don't like to do that. It's not the safest thing to do. It also makes the warranty issues kind of hard if you have a hole drilled through the clip going into the door and let's say your window goes bad. Somebody might get upset about that. If that's a method you decide to do, maybe just grab the wires and the kick panels. It's a little safer. Second, you can cut the harness. There again, it's entirely up to you. If it's a method you choose to do, make sure you cut the wire about three or four inches away from the amplifier. That way, if you need to, you can solder it back together. However, the best option is this guy right here. This is the pack APH-GM02. This is a set of T harnesses for the amplifier. What this allows us to do is get all the speaker wires and everything we need and then plug the amplifier in so that it does everything it needs to do. Let's open it up. I want to show you what we're talking about. So naturally, like always, it has an instruction. The nice thing about the instructions is there are going to be a lot of wires and a lot of colors. It's going to give you a breakout of what all the colors mean. Now inside the bag, as I said, there's a T harness. There's actually three T harnesses. So the first T harness up is going to be this big guy right here. This is your first. This is an eight pin. As you can see, it uses yellow and black. This is the main power harness. That's going to be this first harness right here. So we'll go ahead and unplug that. Plug it into the car first. Make sure it clips. It is going to be a little stiff. Plug that into the amplifier. Go ahead and grab the second one. The second one is going to be our main speaker harness. And that's going to be this green harness here. All right, so now we'll go ahead and unplug the third harness. There again, make sure it clicks. So now that we have them all plugged in, what we want to do is go ahead and take a tone generator like this, and we're going to play a tone through each one of these speakers and figure out if there's a speaker on the other end of this. Not all Bose systems have all the speakers filled in. And there again, this is for multiple cars, so multiple cars are gonna have different things. You're gonna wanna figure out which ones you need for your particular application. Now, they've gone ahead and they've labeled these too, so if you don't wanna look at the sheet, you don't have to. We're gonna go ahead and start with the white, white, black stripe. This should be driver's front. And it's driver's front lower door. Passenger front lower door. And that's the subwoofer, which we're not going to be using. So next we'll go ahead and grab our next harness here, and we'll go ahead and tone that. We'll start with the grays. That's the passenger dash. So on this third harness, there was another gray wire here that is labeled right front speaker too. I'm going to jump ahead and try toning that. Okay, so I get nothing out of that one, which is telling me I don't need this harness. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug this one and put it back to the factory. Move on to our green. That's going to be our driver's rear. The purple should be our passenger rear. And it is. Now we have the center speaker, which this car I don't think has. And it doesn't. And we also have the rear trim speaker. And there again, this car doesn't have that as an option. And then the last two are going to be the two whites. Fernando's actually working on putting that tweeter in the dash right now. Knowing what we know about the grays though, where we have the speaker too, this white, white, black isn't the speaker we're looking for. It's going to be this white, red, white, blue. And sure enough, it is. So on this harness, there's going to be three sets of wires we're not going to use. The orange, the browns, and then the white, white, black 
because we're going to be using the white white black on this harness but we're not going to be using the blue on this harness now what i like to do is fold those over and we're going to actually remove them from the harness we don't need them so we're going to take them out of the way i don't like a bunch of excess wire when i'm doing an install however let's talk about here at the amplifiers you can see there's all these speaker wires here that were just chilling because it is a t-harness now the reason why they give you all these wires here is if you did want to retain let's say in this case let's say he wanted to retain the factory sub for whatever reason well i can take this blue and this blue and combine those together and that would allow me to keep that factory sub plane or if i wanted to retain the center channel if it had one or if i wanted to retain rear speakers the t harness just makes it a little bit easier for that application that you're trying to do if you're trying to amplify let's say just the front speakers and you're going to be using Using this harness to do it you can combine all the other wires together and then take these off of here that way you don't have to cut the factory harness the whole idea behind this is to make this as seamless and easy as possible without having to damage the factory harness now let's head up to the front of the car and we'll figure out how to get the factory radio out so that we can plug the amp pro in so to get this radio out, the first thing you have to do is remove this bezel here which seems simple enough other than the fact that there's like 10 clips all along that hold this thing in place. And of course they're metal. So what you need to do is of course with your plastic dash tool is just start working it ever so slightly, loosening up the kit. Now if they've armor all the dash, a lot of the times your armor all will get into these cracks and turn into glue. So like I said, you just wanna start loosening up the kit. And eventually what's gonna happen is you're gonna find the weak spot and it's gonna pop free. Go ahead and pull it forward and if it has the seat heaters go ahead and unplug them and as you can see from the back four clips here two clips here four more across there it's a lot of clips so this is definitely the most stressful part of the install because of the thin spot with a clip here and here and then two clips here with a thin spot now what we want to do is go ahead and pull these four seven millimeter screws here and this whole bezel will come right off once you've gotten the four screws out, there are still some clips that are holding this in place. Just go ahead and wiggle it a little bit. And they'll come right out. On the back, there's just three clips, two on the radio and one on the air conditioner. Just kind of hold the radio by the air conditioner. And that's what the back of it looks like. Big clip, big clip, blue USB looking cable, and then a little eight pin for the radio and of course the air conditioner. Now make sure you set this aside someplace where you don't have to worry about the screen getting all scratched up. Now this is gonna be a radio like you've never seen before in that it's just a bunch of boxes. This is your CD player here on the bottom. This is gonna be your telematic system where the Wi-Fi is. And then this top box here, this is the actual radio. This is what we're looking for. These are gonna be the harnesses we're going to want. Now before we plug the Amp Pro in, let's head over to the bench and take a look at the instructions, the dip switches, and any notes that we might have to deal with before. Anytime you're doing anything that involves integration into a factory system such as this, there's gonna be a ton of notes at the beginning. Some pertain to your situation, some don't, but always read them. We're not gonna go over those because you can download this document before you buy it if you go to pack-audio.com and then search for the AP4-GM61. The first page is gonna be a breakout of the wiring harness and where the RCAs are gonna go like we already talked about. Then we're gonna look at the dip switches. There's two dip switch settings here. Two channel mode is dip switch one, which we're not gonna be using, and then four volt or five volt output. We are gonna be connecting this to another product that does not take five volts of input, so we're gonna go ahead and switch this to four volt. 
This is important because not all products take a five volt input and do really well with it. If you run into a situation where you have your gains low and your amplifier inputs are still shutting down, flip this to the four volt setting and that will alleviate that. And then switches three and four aren't used. Now on page three, it goes ahead and gives you an idea of, for one, the cards that this works on, where you're gonna be plugging this in. Here's a diagram of the radio that we just took a look at, and the two harnesses we're gonna be using to plug into. And then this section here talks about adjusting the chime volume. And then on the last page, it talks about the ability to plug this into your laptop and do some more adjustments, such as use the bass mid and treble controls as a parametric EQ. You can actually go in and change the frequencies that you're adjusting when you turn those up. So if you're not gonna be doing any form of DSP with this, then you can go in and tweak it just a little bit more than say the factory. And then page five has to do with doing a firmware update, restoring factory settings, and of course a troubleshooting section. There's lights on the top of this unit here and they'll blink to tell you what's going on and here's the code in order to decipher that. Now that we have this set up the way we want, we're gonna put a little piece of tape over this so that this isn't bumped. We're also going to take a Sharpie and we're going to write front, rear, center, and sub on here because what's gonna happen is we're gonna stick this in the dash where these RCAs are sticking out and we're not gonna have access to the sticker that's located on the bottom. Now let's go ahead and we'll plug this in here. We'll plug in our base knob so that we don't lose it. Let's head into the car and plug in the T-harness. So we wanna unplug the gray harness and then the darker gray harness here. We'll plug into the radio first. Now all our harnesses are plugged in, we will reroute these and tuck them over here. And then we're also going to mount this guy right underneath here. So we found that this is a really nice place to put this. So this will just sit just like that in the dash. We can plug our RCAs into it. So now that we know how the Amp Pro is gonna work in the dash, how we're gonna integrate into the back, we're gonna go ahead and install a system, come back and show you the end result. And just like that, we're done. Let's go ahead and hop in and see how this GM61 interfaced with the car. So we have our amplifier that we've installed. We've also installed the DSP. We have another amplifier here. And as earlier, there is the Bose amplifier. Our T harnesses are in place, zip tied in so that they're not gonna bang around. We had to lengthen some of the wires to get all the way over to here to reach this amplifier, but they were long enough to reach this. Just to fill you on what's going on here, this amplifier is a five channel. Channel one and two is connected to the tweeters. Channel three and four is connected to the mid base of the door. And channels five and six, which are these rear speakers here, are powered off this small two channel amp. And of course, there's a subwoofer right here. We're not using the factory one. Let's go ahead and take a look in the dash. So we have the unit in place. We've gone ahead and zip tied up all our wires so they're nice and tucked away. So over here is our remote turn on. Like we said, this has the remote turn on out. We're using that to turn on our DSP and then our DSP has an output which is turning on our amplifier. So we loop them up here. I like to run all my remote turn ons, inputs and outputs up to one central location in case I need to change something or move something around for sequencing. Anytime you're doing something like integrating into a factory radio, sometimes things turn on too fast. You may get a pop. And if you do, having your remote turn on someplace where you can get to them to change things around, will help you out. Now we're only using front and rear. Our base knob, which is also gonna be our chime volume, is located right here. So speaking of chime volume, we're gonna go ahead and get this control center back on. We're not gonna plug in the bezel. That way we could show you how to adjust the chime volume. Go ahead and pull your brain back out. You need to do two things. One, you need to find the program button right here that we talked about earlier. And two, turn the subwoofer level control all the way counterclockwise or all the way down. Now go ahead and press this for one second and you're gonna to wanna to be looking here at the red light. Press and hold for one second, release. It'll turn green and you'll start to hear the chime coming out of the speakers. Now counterclockwise is all the way down. So it's gonna start with it all the way down. If you like it there, just don't touch anything for 10 seconds and it'll stay that way. If you want it a little bit louder, just turn it up until you find the desired volume you like, and then just wait for 10 seconds, and or you can press this button twice. The light will go red once you're done. Now just go ahead and tuck the unit back into the dash.
and you're all set. So make sure now at this point, you go ahead and do a little bit of testing. Test your left, rear, front, right. If you're using it for subwoofer level, make sure the sub is turning up and down. Do all the testing before you snap that bezel back on. And with that, we're gonna do some testing. All right, just like that, we're done. We've gone ahead and put the dash bezel back on. We have this thing all wrapped up and ready to deliver to the customer. We've sat here and we've tuned it. Man, let me tell you what, the difference between being able to do an Amp Pro or something that's like a high level to low level adapter is night and day, okay? I can't stress that enough. If you've got one of these trucks, you've got the eight inch touchscreen, even if you don't have Bose, go watch our video where we put one in the non-Bose version of this. There's right. a few things that are different, but go check out that video for sure. I'll try to link to it in the show notes so you guys know. And that one, we go ahead and we do a full install, soup to nuts, the whole thing. So we didn't show you all the install, we showed you the finished product, but we're gonna let you listen to it. You ready, buddy? Oh, there's that nice soft beep. That's a gold track. I know, it sounds so, so mellow. Ready? Drop the beat, man. Alright guys, you have a great night as always. We'll see you later next time. See the next one, guys. Now just in case you're wondering what subs we went ahead and put in this, we have two T110s and a Fox box. Underneath the back seat, powered off that fifth channel of the Morel amplifier. It's killing it. Ooh, killing it.